The interesting thing about the Quran is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly warns us about the vigilance of shaitan and, and how dedicated he is to leading you astray. But at the end of it all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna kayda shaytani kana da'ifa. That shaitan's entire plan, despite him working on you 24 hours, despite him feasting on your insecurities and your desires, his plan is actually pretty weak. He comes to you with all of these things and he tries to take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the end of the day, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you is enough to suffice you. And what you really need to be careful with is when shaitan attacks you from all the different directions that he comes to you with, you really need to understand what he's trying to do with each of those different directions. And so some of the scholars, they actually commented very powerfully. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the promise of shaitan to attack from the left and from the right and from in front and from behind, they said that he'll come to you a different way. So he might come to you, for example, from your left side with sayyat, with sins. So he'll try to lead you astray with a sin. He'll try to get you to bite on a sin. And if he can't get you to sin, to just commit an outright sin, then what he'll do is he'll come to you from your right side. And the right side usually represents al-hasanat and all that that is noble, good deeds and all that is, that is noble. So for example, shaitan will come to you and try to corrupt your salah. He'll try to corrupt your fasting. He'll try to corrupt your zakah, your sadaqah, whatever it may be. He'll try to take something noble and corrupt your intention so that it's no longer a noble deed because the intention is corrupt. So he'll try to lead you astray from your right side. And then if he can't get you from there, then he'll come to you from in front of you. And how does he come to you from in front of you? He decorates things. He puts this zina, right? He tries to call you to it. He throws these constant commercials at you, right? These ads at you. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Just try this, try that. It'll help you. It'll make you feel better. So on and so forth. He keeps on decorating these things. You know, Imam bin Sirin, rahimahullah ta'ala, he was commenting on a statement from one of the tabi'een that shaitan will constantly be in front of every sin and try to draw your attention to it. And he says that if I was to see a woman in my dreams that I recognize is not halal for me, astrifu basari, I lower my gaze even in my dreams, even when it's not haram to do so, to prepare myself for the attack of shaitan when I'm awake, right? Because shaitan is constantly trying to draw your gaze to these different things, right? So he'll come to you from in front of you. He'll come to you from behind you. With doubts and hesitation. So you find yourself progressing spiritually. You find that the religion is opening its doors for you. That you're finally starting to enjoy these halaqas and enjoy your prayer and recitation of Quran. And then an Islamophobe says something about your religion that you're not equipped to answer. And suddenly you now have hesitation and doubts and you're no longer able to spiritually progress. Which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ those who truly fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or have this great awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the scholars or the people of knowledge. Why? Because when people throw these doubts or they try to shed doubts surrounding the religion, they can easily counter them because they already know. And subhanAllah, I want you to think about this. How many times has an Islamophobe said something about the Prophet ﷺ or said something about your religion? And it almost took you away from the religion. But then when you went and studied that issue, you actually came closer to your religion. We were talking about slavery the other day. We had our webcast on slavery. And subhanAllah, that concept of this topic horrified many Muslims. But when you actually study the humanity of the Prophet ﷺ, the mercy of the Prophet ﷺ, how groundbreaking the initiatives of the Prophet ﷺ and this religion were in regards to that evil institution, you actually come closer to your religion. You actually love Allah more. You actually love the Messenger ﷺ more. And so that's really what's important to recognize here, that whatever he comes to you with, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you more. Right, So if he comes to you from your left side with your sins, Allah has given you something that gives you far more pleasure than sin. Allah has given you hasanat, good deeds, and Allah has given you permissible alternatives to those sins. Then when he comes to you with your right side and tries to turn your focus away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to something that's not noble, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so much greater. It's so much more pleasing to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than to please other people because you realize that, that trying to do things for the sake of other people is really not that fulfilling at the end of the day. In fact, it, it makes you less happy. But trying to do things to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those sincere good deeds just between you and Allah, they're actually greater. So you squash the plan of shaitan from your right. 
You squash the plan of shaitan from the left. You see the things that he decorates in front of you and you go, wait a minute, I'm not going to miss Jannah. Uh, and the things that Allah has prepared for me in paradise for this silly deed, for these things that he's decorating in front of me, right? I'm going to wait for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised me and assured me. So you lower your gaze knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for you something far greater. And when he comes to you from behind you with doubts and hesitation, you disable him with the knowledge of this religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to pursue. So yes, he comes to you, he's vigilant. He comes to you from all different directions, but nevertheless, his plan is indeed a weak plan because Allah has enabled you, Allah has equipped you. Strength and weakness, these are both relative terms. What was considered a, a, a strong enemy, you know, a thousand years ago <laughs> would be a very weak enemy today. Think about the weaponry of an army 1,000 years ago. If it was the strongest army on earth at that time, if it was to face the weakest army on earth today, because of what that army is equipped with, right, that army will, the, the, the so-called strong army will be wiped out. So Allah has equipped you with enough to fight the shaitan. And so despite everything that he has, inna kayda shaytani la'ifa, verily the shaytan and his plan are weak and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us strength and to grant us victory over him and the evil of ourselves.